this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you my top 15 crochet tips and tricks. The yarn that I'm using throughout the video is Bravo Worsted provided by We Crochet and I'm using my Furls Streamline Crochet Hook. If you sign up for my newsletter you will also receive the PDF digital download that has step-by-step -step instructions and photo tutorials for these tips. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna show you how to do the magic knot. I'm gonna go through some different joining techniques and be sure to share your favorite joining techniques in the comments. So we have our blue strand and our mint strand. So take your mint strand and you're going to tie a knot around the blue. Nice and tight. Now take your blue strand and tie a knot around the mint. Nice and tight. Now all you need to do is take your mint and your blue, pull those together nice and tight. Okay, and then you can just trim the excess yarn. Okay, that's my first knot I'm going to show you. The next knot I'm going to show you when joining yarn is the thumb join. So let's say you've run out of yarn, you're joining in a new color or a new piece of yarn, whatever the case may be. I want you to take the yarn and put it between your thumb and your index finger. Take your new yarn, in this case it's the blue. We're going to wrap it around our thumb once, twice, and the third time we're going to go between the tails and the thumb. You're going to take the tails, you're going to tuck them under the yarn, okay, and I like to pinch it with my thumb, start to pull. If you have some little threads, you can just trim them. This one is really quick and easy, and I find if I'm in a rush and a knot is not going to be noticeable in my work, this is a great technique. Now let's do the Russian join. So you're going to need a yarn needle for this join. Take your yarn, intertwine your yarn pieces like this. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to take our yarn needle and put it on the hook. This is also a little tip on how to get that yarn threaded through. Now what you're going to do is you're going to thread through the yarn. It can, this can be fiddly. See all of those little threads? You need to get your yarn needle going through them the best you can. And some yarns, this is easier than others. It's fiddly. I just kind of like going as much through the center as possible. I don't like, you can grab each individual thread, but I don't have sometimes the patience. So I just try to get it through the center of the yarn. Then 
This sort of join is really great if you really don't want any kind of a knot in your work. Like I say, it's a little fiddly, it's a little more time consuming, but a lot of people really love this. Okay, so now we're gonna push, we're gonna pull the yarn now through that. Okay, just that pull out. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So push the yarn in and then just get threading that needle through the center of the yarn. Okay, now we're going to pull it through. And then you may still have some ends. You just want to trim them. So come in here with your scissors. Just trim. A little bit more there I could trim but you can see how nice that looks a couple stitches may be a little bit thicker but that's all and you have a really nice secure join one of my favorite techniques is the magic ring and I'm going to show you how I do it so I take my yarn and I wrap it around my index finger three times. Taking my hook, sliding it through all three strands of yarn, I grab the first and pull it through. Chain however many your pattern calls for, so I'm just gonna chain two and do half double crochets, but you can really do anything here. So yarn over, and then you're gonna work your stitches in that ring, however many the pattern calls for. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do six. Okay. So now if this is fairly full, you just wanna make sure you're pulling all of your work out of the way so you can see these two loops. Now take your tail and start to pull it. As you can see, this yarn is coming in, this one's popping out. So I want you to take the piece that's pulling in, take it, pull it, and now it pulls the other one in. So then you can just go back now and grab your tail and pull. And I just love how tight it makes that join, that, the start of your round. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is also a good tip for joining. Instead of joining into the chain, join into the top of the stitch. And then you won't have a hole. And then just pull that. And you've joined your circle. Now, whether you're working in a row or a round, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna show you how you can seamlessly change color as you go. And this could also be another joining technique if you don't want to use the other methods that I showed you. You can do this the same as if you were bringing in a new ball of yarn in the same color or whether you're bringing in a new color. So what you're going to do is go to work your stitch. So I'm working half double crochet, so I've yarned over. I'm going through the stitch. I've pulled up a loop. Now instead of yarning over with this color, I can yarn over with a new ball of yarn. So now instead of yarning over with my 
working yarn, I'm bringing in the new color or a new ball of yarn, pulling it through. And then you can crochet over these tails as you work. I'm increasing, so I'll continue with my increase pattern. So it doesn't matter whether this is a new ball of yarn or just adding on a new ball because you've run out of one color. Both ways work. So now let's say we're carrying along this yarn and we want to change back to the other color. So go through the stitch, pull up a loop. You can drop off your blue. I like to keep that all to one side. Pull back up the mint and just pull through just like that. And then you can continue to carry along those tails with you. And as you can see, it's very seamless. It looks great. Now this tip here is gonna show you how to do a seamless join. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna leave those tails so I don't wreck my yarn, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut this yarn. So how I showed you before was slip stitching into the top of those stitches. This time we're not going to do that because we want this join to be completely seamless. So I'm just going to pull through the yarn. I'm going to take my yarn needle. Basically what we're going to do is almost create a faux stitch here. So you're going to take your yarn needle, you're going to go through under both loops of your very first stitch. Pull that through. Okay, now that's creating a, a faux front loop. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go through the center of the stitch, which is creating a faux back loop. And then you can see that join is seamless and you just take these ends now, weave them, you're weaving your ends it's really good to hide them and if you pierce going through a stitch rather than just under it it's really going to secure that and that's a little extra bonus tip that I've given you and you always want to weave one way and then you want to go back in the opposite direction and that is what will ultimately secure that from coming undone. And I always like to go with like colors as well. So I've shown you now how to do the seamless join and weave in those ends. Now let's take a look at some of our chain stitches, how we can begin our work when we're working in rows. So let's start it with a slip knot. Get that on the hook. And we're gonna chain, let's just chain out nine. One, two, three. Now you could just work back into the front or the back loops of the chain. But to make your chain look even better, just rotate your chain and you can see there's all these little humps. Sometimes you'll see it referred as the hump, work into the back hump, work into the back leg, whatever. But this is what it means. So you're rotating, you're looking at that little back loop right here. So we're gonna go ahead and single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's one, two, 
rotate, push your hook through, and then you're just going to work across the chain working and it's important that your chain isn't too tight or it could be hard to work into them. So make sure your chain is fairly loose. There's the last one. And then you can see it looks like a proper stitch on both sides which is really nice. It makes a nice finished edge for your crochet projects. Now I'm just gonna continue from this project to show you a really great tip for beginners. Stitch markers are really important to have. You wanna have stitch markers on hand. They're gonna come in so handy for so many different things. So now a lot of times I get questions about crocheters losing count of their stitches. So we have eight stitches here. They may start making a triangle, a triangle shape, or your work may start going out. So in or out, you're either increasing stitches or you're losing stitches. By using some stitch markers to help you, this will eliminate that. So let's put a marker in our stitch here. Here's our first stitch, and you can always tell your stitches, they have these little Vs. So here's all of our stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll chain one and turn, and let's work a single crochet into that first stitch. And I'll work into the next. So now what you can do is go ahead and mark that first stitch right there work across your row and even if you are a seasoned crocheter this can still be helpful if you're working a pattern that can be hard to tell the first and last stitches so here's my last stitch I can pull that marker out work into it chain one and turn work my first stitch just like to work across two before I add it just makes it easier Add your marker back in and you can just keep doing that and then you're going to be sure that you're keeping the same number of stitches throughout. Now continuing to work from this little swatch that I've already made, the next tip is to keep your edges straight. Now if you're not aware, a single crochet is the height, a chain one is the height of a single crochet, chain two is the height of a half double, chain three is the height of a double, chain four is the, the height of a treble, and so on. So now if you chain two, three, or four at the beginning of your row, you're really going to start to get a wobbly row effect. So to fix that, just chain one at the beginning of every row. So I'm gonna work a double crochet, which I would normally chain three. I've only chained one. I'm gonna work into the first stitch right here. And I'm gonna work my double. Work doubles all the way across. Some crocheters will not even chain. They'll just begin working right into that stitch but I do like starting with a chain, so I'm happy with the chain one technique. So chain one and turn, and then in that very first stitch, I'll work my double. And work that across. And it really will give you a nice straight edge as opposed to a wobbly one that will happen if you're working a chain three instead. I know it's just a little swatch, but 
it shows you the idea. Back to our stitch marker stitch. Um, locking stick stitch markers are great to have as well as these ones that are easy to slide on and off. So a locking stitch marker looks like this. So now I'm finished with this project. You can just put that on there and then your work is not gonna come unraveled. So this is again, another good reason why you should always have your stitch markers on hand and you can throw that in the bag. And another tip as well, you may wanna attach a little tag that just lets you know the hook that you were using. It's really easy if you put your project away for a while that you forget the hook and the brand that you were using. So my next tip is in regards to crochet hooks. This is an eye hook. This is also an eye hook. This is an Odyssey from Furls. This is a streamline for fur from Furls. When you're working a swatch, if you swatch with both of these hooks, you may notice there is a difference in your swatch size. So I tend to crochet looser with the streamline than I do with the Odyssey. Why? I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'm more relaxed. This one's a little bit lighter, but there is a difference. So an important thing to remember is don't switch your hook brands in the same project or it may change your gauge. If your gauge works out fine changing a, to a different brand, that's okay, but you wanna make sure that you're aware before you switch out or it could potentially mess up your project. Now I showed you how to work in the back of the hump to get that really nice edge. Sometimes the pattern work will call for foundation stitches and it gives you that same look, but there's no foundation chain. You do the, the foundation chain and the stitch all at once. And this works for whatever stitch it is. So if it's a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, it's just your starting chain will vary. So for a single crochet, we will chain two. A half double, you would chain three. A double, you would chain four, and so on. So now what you wanna look at is, here's the second chain from the hook. If you rotate it, you're gonna see this, the little bump back here. Okay, so when we go and work back through here, we're going through here as well as that little hump of a stitch at the back the leg. You'll pull your yarn through. So now you have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through one stitch only. This is going to be the chain. Now you just complete your single crochet. So yarn over, pull through two. I like to keep my finger when I'm learning just on that chain because that is where we're going to go back and work. So here's the chain. If you rotate, you can see that other loop right here. So that's where you're gonna push your hook through. So pull up a loop, we're gonna yarn over, pull through one again for our foundation chain. Now we're gonna complete a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through. Go back down. Pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one yarn over, pull through two. And as you get going, it'll get really a lot easier to see where you're going in. And you may not need to keep putting your finger there once you know where you're placing your hook. And then you can see it's gonna make a nice stretchy start. The stitches are gonna look both on both sides. They're gonna look good. 
and it's not, sometimes a chain can be fairly tight at the beginning of your work, but if you do a foundation chain and stitch, it tends to be a lot looser. Another good tip for counting, when we have really long rows we have to count or stitch up, it's good again to use stitch markers and maybe put a marker at, let's say 20 stitches, count again another 20, place a marker, and then you don't have to go back and recount a ridiculous amount of stitches. So it's good to just place markers as you go so that if you do mess up, because I'm sure a family member or someone is gonna come and start talking to you when you're in the middle of counting that 300 stitch row. So adding the markers is a great tip for when you're counting long stretches of stitches. So one thing I can't live without is my weigh scale and I use it for so many things when I'm designing and figuring out patterns. So for instance, if I've completed, let's say a garment and I haven't kept track of how many balls of yarn I've used, I can weigh the garment and see how many grams it is, figure out how many grams are on a ball, divide my total by the 50 grams, and then I know how many balls of yarn I've used for that project. But let's say we've used multiple colors in a project. What I like to do is make sure that I have the balls that I used because then what you can do is kind of a reverse way. You can weigh out your ball, subtract that from the total grams on a ball, and it will tell you how much you used off that ball. So that's another way you can figure out. One more tip with your scale is if you need to figure out how much yarn you need for, let's say, a blanket, you can make up your swatch, figure out the grams and the dimensions of that swatch, then if you know the dimensions of the blanket you're making, let's say a 50 by 60, you just need to figure out how many grams will be needed for that size. So again, it's a little bit of math doing that figuring, but the scale helps us to know how many grams per whatever size we've made. So the final trick here I'm going to show you is a felting join for joining yarn. Now you need to use a wool, an animal fiber to do this. So you want 100% wool. Um, you don't want super wash. It doesn't work as well. I'm using right now my sugar bush bold and it is 100% merino. So what you want to do is rough up those ends, each end. Then you're going to use some water and you're just going to spray them to get them damp. Then what you want to do is take them in your hand and we're going to just rub these together. The rubbing action, twisting action, and the heat from our hands is what is going to kind of fuse these fibers together and just join this yarn. So it's gonna take a little bit of elbow grease. You wanna just keep rubbing them. I found that if it wasn't joining well to add like a little bit more water and that also helps. But you just wanna keep rubbing for at least a minute, if not more, just to get these ends all felted together. Okay, as you can see, it's joined it together. It's just sort of like magic. Again, this works well with roving, 100% wool roving, 100% wools.